Elijah is a prophet. The man who holds the role of Elijah, it says at the end of Malachi, is Elijah the prophet. And there are three things that are important about this man. There's somebody who's going to restore all things, fix the family unit. Christ added restore all things in Matthew and do it before the great and terrible day of the Lord. And he is a prophet called Elijah the prophet. That introduces a great question. Who is that prophet of Deuteronomy 18? Is he Christ or is he a man? And when is his commission carried out? So, all right, I'm going to raise up, sounds like a man, a prophet, an office always held by men. There's a couple of points right there. From the midst of you. God said he's going to be like Moses. He's going to be someone who speaks what God tells him to do, just like Moses did, between the people and God. Here's who that prophet is. There are no other possibilities. He is Elijah the prophet. He has the same job description. He works in the same time period. But he's Elijah the prophet before he had a name. Kind of interesting. Joshua is my name. He's given, he's full of the spirit of wisdom. I look at things now pertaining to Joshua and to Moses because I'm both Moses, like Moses, and I'm not Moses, I think Mr. Armstrong fulfilled that parallel, but I'm like him. But, but I'm after him, so I'm more like Joshua in some ways, but God says, really, you're neither one. You're a prophet like Elijah. You confront and restore all things. Joshua didn't restore anything. Elijah did. Now, also, we have another book that has to retire. And it is officially, as all of you brethren out there are hearing it on the subject, who is that prophet? Is he alive today? The part about is he alive today? Yes, I was right. But I thought it was Christ. If you want to go back and read the book, I defended the truth as I believed it was. I was attempting to be faithful to that truth. Wrote a book because there was a man in Oklahoma who claimed to be that prophet. I knew he wasn't. I knew he wasn't fulfilling the prophecy, and I saw him deceiving thousands of people, many thousands of whom have left him now since that time. Some had left before, and I felt I needed to write a book clarifying why he was not that prophet. The thrust of the book was right. He didn't even know that prophet is Elijah. He has no idea what that prophet does. He just took the title to himself like he has over 30-some titles. So I felt I had to clarify it. I was wrong. But I was right to say he wasn't that prophet. I was right to say that prophet was alive. So if it's true that I am Elijah the prophet now, then this is a lock for next week. It's an absolute lock. If somehow these are just the last days of my sermons, and it's just a charge I filled before I become Joshua, I'm just trying to be heart to heart with you. It's a dilemma. You heard what I said as recently as yesterday. I'm telling, not foretelling. But if, if, if there's, I don't see a way out of this. Now, if, if, if this means it's locked and we have under six days to go, it's wonderful. If there's some other reason to believe, I'll be the first prophet since the garden, since the world began, who is never a human prophet, was an apostle. But I'm somehow like Moses, but Moses went as a human being, and you know, okay, he was raised. So then I'm raised for a period of time, but never, never as a prophet. As recently as this week, I've gone, I've said, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not Elijah. I still want to say I'm not. But I am left with those problems. And if there's another way to explain the verses, okay, then maybe it's not as certain next week. But if it's engraved in stone and I'm rushing to call it out, which sounds like the last days of my voice, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and we're waiting for the 1335 and now it's solid, it looks suspicious. It looks suspicious. So I leave you with that. It is what it is. Am I telling or foretelling? I guess I could say not sure. I'm called the seventh messenger. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not called Elijah directly, so I'm called the seventh messenger. I may have been Elijah for a week. I may have been Elijah since the series began for six and two-thirds years. But I don't know when I became 
a, 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 a prophet? I don't know. After 18 years, I still don't know when I became an apostle. Uh, and anybody who says, well, I don't know if you functioned as Elijah yet. Well, let me just tell you something. You, I'm gonna tell you, you do, do not and cannot believe, you do not and cannot possibly believe Christ's return is imminent. Because this man functions as Elijah right before it happens. If somebody wants to say, I don't think you have yet, now they're probably going to leave the church in the next five minutes. A lot of the confusion I've had about how to know when I was Elijah just goes poof. But I am not Elijah the prophet. I am only in the sense that the ancient John the Baptist came a little ahead of Christ. Would there be a modern man who'd come a little ahead of Christ, carry that name, but he has his own name. He's sort of like Moses, but carries the name of Elijah, which is kind of an interesting thing in itself. So I am not Elijah the prophet. Not now, not ever. Sort of a, a type coming in the spirit and power of Elijah. So, you know, I don't know when I became like Elijah the prophet, but now I know I am not that man. We no longer have to spend five minutes talking about it. I'm the seventh messenger. Yes, I am the messenger who is sent to prepare the way right in the face of the Father and Son coming together in Malachi 3.1 before the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Christ said in Matthew 17 and, and Mark 9 that uh, Elijah comes first and I've anointed him. Now that's a term for being a high priest. With whom my hand shall be established, my arm also shall strengthen him. So he's mighty, he's strong, he's exalted, and he's chosen. Now, we cannot be describing a regular prophet. There's no way. I know there's Elijah the prophet before the great and dreadful day of the Lord. But since we know this man as a prophet, there's no way we described a regular prophet. Impossible. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and have kindred and tongue and, and, and people. Now that may be, that may be uh, Elijah again, probably is. Maybe it's the seventh messenger, I'm not sure. Maybe it's the seventh angel, if you want to put it that way. So if God was going to show me this, I thank God, speaking from the heart as your leader, I thank God he never showed me this where I had very long to think about it, because it'll work on you. Don't envy this man. Anybody who does, I'm going to petition God, you can do it, and I'll stay back and fear not and pray for you, because I, I need prayers. Because you say, well, I don't know, maybe it's not you. Well, then it's some other David who's the seventh messenger in a world that looks kind of like this one. And I wish there were another, another person. So start with the fact that chapter 10, Mr. Armstrong never believed was Jesus Christ. I'll tell you in, from chapter 11 why I went that direction. But you should at least understand that uh, chapter 10 is pretty obvious that it's Elijah. He was a prophet and more than a prophet. I've been more than a prophet. He was a Levite, so am I. God raised him. Well, nobody thinks I came to this office by myself. Go over to Ezekiel chapter 33, 43, sorry, Ezekiel 43. Now, for the first three chapters, um, Elijah is measuring the temple in what would be the first kingdom. And he's explaining it to uh, Ezekiel. Um, I think Elijah's mentioned, I don't know, dozens of times in here. And you cannot argue with, with the sheer massive proof I'm going to lay on you next time that Elijah rises before February 10th. Which Lord made the wise and faithful servant, Elijah, ruler over his household for a couple dozen years. Well, God did. Well, now, the same Lord is described as making him ruler over all that he has. So the householder can come early on and be here for the parable of the wheat and tares and gives all that he has to Elijah. That is not Christ. Christ has no kingdom yet to give God raises all of us, Elijah. Will, will we, will you be seen in the kingdom to Israel? Or will only your voice be heard? God will not yet be seen. We know that. 
He goes to his temple and stays there. He hides his power. He will not be seen. Christ will not be seen. There is no evidence that Elijah is seen. The Bible emphasizes his voice over and over again. Elijah's first coming is over, and so are God's mysteries. If, if the first time I speak is called prophesying, then it's over. There's nothing that could be added. So surely everyone knows now I will not speak again. But the days of this man's voice have to, surely have to fit three days ago, 446 and 447. Christ comes and finds this man so doing. Well, guess what? The conference is starting in two and a half days. I never could figure that out. Am I up here in the pulpit or something? I used to wonder that. Found so doing, found so doing. What is that? I, I, I sat and worked as hard as I could at trying to give you what would be the right way to do this. I'm not here. I'm not called to give you a date. The original prophets, I never heard any of the original prophets call out a date. None of them ever did. They called out what God was going to do. Surely God will do nothing, but he reveals it to his servants, the prophets. Now, the fact that he's revealing this to me, I have to be a prophet. Ephesians 3, 5 says it. 2 Peter 1, 20 and 21. You can't reveal these things to a prophet and maybe a bunch of prophets or at least two more if they're in the room. I have to be Elijah now. Elijah comes first. He does not rise first. He comes first and then restores all things. So I don't know what else I would change. If this is not Christ appearing because he's revealed a year later and it's Elijah appearing, then you're going to appear with massive power and hundreds of millions or potentially even billions under you will see you. There's no way the messenger of the covenant could be Christ. God's people delight in a coming Elijah. We all talked about him. This is a man that people delight in. Uh, let me add something <clears throat> that I neglected to say that uh, would be helpful to understand who delights in Elijah. The Lord whom you seek shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant whom you delight in. Uh, every Levite who's ever lived knows that there is a high priest coming. They know that Elijah the prophet closes this book and Christ had to get out of the way one time because uh, they wanted to make him a king. He knew that because Elijah would come as a king. And we never really talked about that, but that's one of the things that Christ understood. Uh, maybe they knew more about how Elijah would be a king, how Elijah was the branch in the past than we, we do today, or the most do today. But when it says Elijah is Elyon above the kings of the earth, he towers over them. If you think Christ, for instance, is the God of the Old Testament, you will never understand all kinds of verses. But let's go further, because until recently, we couldn't figure out the difference between Elijah and Christ. So we, had, we saw one being. Christ was the Lord of hosts, and he was also fulfilling all the roles of Elijah. He was the star that came out of Israel. He was the shepherd of Israel. He was the stone, the messenger of the covenant, the branch. No, he's not. He's the vine and the captain of the host. Because if you look through and you believe all of that, there's one being where in fact there's three. One's the Lord of hosts. One, the other one said, my father is greater than I, he's the captain of the hosts, host. And the other one's way down the line. He's a man called a servant and various other things. And he's Elijah. We th used to think that prophet was Christ uh, but Elijah the prophet was somebody who came into the church. So we didn't even know that that uh, that prophet and Elijah the prophet were the same being. But we ought to ask a question. Elijah is raised to restore all things. Would restore all things include a temple? Thus speaks the Lord of hosts. That's why it's so critical that we understand Christ is the vine, he's not the branch. This is not his kingdom. Behold the man whose name is the branch. And he shall grow up out of his place, and he shall build the temple of the Lord. So I'm not prophesying. I want, I want to clear that up. I'm absolutely not prophesying. I know in part, and I'm teaching in part. I am teaching. I'm an apostle. 
I am no more Elijah now than you are in the God family with me or me with you. I am teaching you. I'm a messenger. Can't go to next year. The series is over. Elijah said to make it plain, and then Christ comes in a tiny, tiny micron. I said, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not Elijah. I may have been Elijah for a week. I may have been Elijah since the series began for six and two thirds years. But I am not Elijah the prophet. I have to be Elijah now. I am no more Elijah now than you are in the God family with me 